Hey, it's me, your boy. Today, what are we gonna do? You're gonna blow everybody. No, we're not doing that. Uh, today, we are gonna be comparing and contrasting. This is like my 200th take. And these aren't easy to watch movies. Okay. Getting ahead of myself. What did, what did I watch this weekend? I watched... See, I saw the trailer for The Painted Bird. And I was like, ooh, this looks good. But they kept comparing it in the reviews I'd see. They kept comparing it to Come and See. I was like, oh, I need to see Come and See. It's time I finally see it. It's been on my watch list for about a year. So I watched Come and See. And then I watched The Painted Bird. And then I watched Come and See again to, as prep for this. And I want to compare and contrast them because they're similar films in that they're both... World War II movies through the eyes of a child, and that child has to grow up quick through the atrocities of World War II. But that is kind of where the similarities end. One of these movies I really liked, one of these movies I would never watch again if you paid me, and I think you're gonna figure that out pretty quick, but I think it would be fun to compare and contrast them on different levels and different aspects, and what's a strength and what's a weakness, and that's what I'm gonna do, okay? And uh, if you don't want to watch it, that's fine. No, no, what the fuck? Yeah, no, watch it. But I'm gonna, there's gonna be spoilers. I'm loopy as shit because I've done this like eight times. Um, it, there's gonna be spoilers, but I don't really think you can spoil a war movie. I'm not gonna say like so-and-so dies or anything like that. So if you're one of those people, like you don't want to know any frame of the movie before you see it, then yeah, uh, come pause this and go watch both these movies and then come back. But if you kind of expect you can you read a review of either of these movies and you know what i'm gonna say uh, as far as content so keep that in mind let's compare let's contrast let's get into it go so let's start with the visuals uh first we'll start with come and see this movie is breathtakingly shot uh it's beautiful it is technically impressive there's a lot of uh, steady cam and the way the camera moves and it's very impressive. There are a lot of memorable shots. There's a shot where uh, tracer bullets are flying at night and it's the it's where you I don't know how to describe tracer bullets. You just be like fucking Google it. But they're like they're lit up and they're flying over his head and then there's a cow gets killed and the cow's eye is darting everywhere. Visually very stunning, very breathtaking. And there are two scenes that kind of bookend each other where at the beginning when he first goes with the Belarusian uh, resistance soldiers and he gets his picture taken, he's this happy-go-lucky, he's got this new suit on, and he's going to war, and he's in the uh, photo with with everybody. And then towards the end of the film, uh, shit got real, and there's a house burning behind him, and he is getting his picture taken with the German soldiers with a gun to his head. So visually stunning. It's a very stunning movie. Very visually impressive movie. There's a reason I watched it twice. Um, the Painted Bird. Not so visually stunning. There are beautiful shots, but it's in stark black and white, but there's nothing really memorable. It, it, there are memorable acts in the movie, and we'll get into that. Very memorable acts in the movie, but as far as the composition and the way things are shot, uh, not so memorable. It's kind of like you get a frame from Pier 1 Imports, and it's got like a black and white picture just already in there. Uh, that's what The Painted Bird was to me. Um, as far as casting and the performances... On paper, you would think that The Painted Bird would be a lot better, but again, Come and See is better. Uh, the kid the kid that plays Flora, uh, Alexei, Alexei Kravchenko, uh, he is really good. There's a lot of those shots in profile where it's close up on his face, and his face, he's young enough where he looks boyish, but he's old enough where he looks world-weary by the end of this movie. It's the arc of his character, and you take in all these atrocities that he's seeing, and they reflect on his face. He looks scared shitless. It's the absolute opposite of Vera Drake, where Vera Drake, when she's getting sentenced for four years in jail, or six years, I forget. What? Who cares? She gets sentenced to go to jail, and she just looks like, oh, and she's so pained and it's too much. This kid looks scared shitless and it looks authentic. And he's he has to cry a lot in this movie. He's a real good crier. Um, the girl, I forget the girl's name, Rosie, I think. But the girl in the movie, she's good because when they meet in the woods, it's this very surreal scene and she plays surreal up very well. 
and uh, just her eyes are great, and she does a lot of the, like, snap, you're laughing, snap, you're crying, and you, you can't tell if she's kind of crazy. I feel that's dismissive, like, you know, bitches be crazy. Uh, but no, it's not that, but she's kind of out there, and the, the woman that plays it plays it very well, and I don't think she was ever in anything else, at least according to Letterboxd. Uh, Painted Bird, you've got Harvey Keitel dubbed, which is weird and dumb and not that good. Uh, you've got Udo Kiel, who I think I know who that is. He's, his character's not very sympathetic, but it's beside the point because you already don't care. He's boring, dumb. And, uh, Stellan Skarsgård is in it. He's really good. Stellan Skarsgård's character, that is, like, the only shining moment in that movie. The only moment of any humanity in The Painted Bird is the Stellan Skarsgård character. The sound, uh, surprise, uh, come and see wins again. Uh, I always watch movies with headphones on, or I try to watch movies with headphones or earbuds in, and this is where it pays dividends to watch it with headphones in, because there's a, a scene where a bomb goes off next to Flora, and then he can't hear for a while, and it sounds all muffled, like when you're, you go underwater and like you can hear yourself breathe. You don't breathe underwater, but you can, you can hear like your inside your head sounds, of, like your ears, I, I don't know, like inner ear noises. I don't know. They, they do a really good job with a bomb went off and he can't hear and it feels like you can't hear. And there are scenes when whenever that plane is above the sky, which this plane right now in real life here is above the sky, but the reconnaissance plane that initially catches him uh, digging up the guns and sets the entire plot into motion, that's very ominous and that's very effective. Every time you hear that plane up in the sky, you know the shit's about to go down. The Germans are watching. It's like this omnipresent eye of the Germans and uh, don't get too excited because we've got our eye on you and we can fuck shit up and we will. Uh, so that sounds very impressive and very effective and the there's bugs everywhere, there's fucking flies, you always hear flies. And then towards the end there's like an actual war, like battles, and uh, not a battle but there, there's a scene with warriors and weapons and everything and you hear the dogs are going fucking crazy, you hear dogs barking, you hear the music from the speakers, you hear the music in the soundtrack going at the same time, which is crazy. You hear people screaming and dying, you hear weapons going off, you hear uh, the, the plane, the plane's always there in the bad times, you hear the vehicles honking and going. So uh, this cacophony of fucking craziness in a normal war movie or like an American war movie, you'd hear that here and there and, you know, big bombs and you'd hear, it, it, it would get loud. The Thin Red Line gets fucking loud and uh, I guess Terrence Malick's thing is he wants you to play that film loud. But this movie stays loud. It stays loud. For, there's like a 20 minute sequence towards the end where it doesn't let up. And it's brutal and it's realistic and it's for a greater point. He's making a very good point. Just in the sound design, he's making a point. Okay, so uh, The Painted Bird. Um, they used the fucking Wilhelm screen in 2019, they used the fucking Wilhelm screen. It's embarrassing. <laughs> it's fucking embarrassing. Next, let's talk about just the atrocities and the ugliness of World War II. And Come and See, everybody says Come and See is a tough watch, and it is a tough watch, but because it's shot so well, it's kind of an easier watch. But there are horrific things happen in that movie. But it is done with a greater message, and that message is, this shit happened, be careful, or this shit could happen again. That's basically why he made the movie, I guess. It was more a reflection when it came out of, like, the Cold War. And you, you see horrific things, but it, there's always a point behind it. You see when they're in the village, and he, uh, the girl turns her head and sees the stack of dead bodies. It's a very quick shot, but that is a very effective shot. You go from, oh, where's everybody at, to just everybody's just fucking discarded like trash and it's people and they're dead and it's everybody Flora's ever known it's his entire family it's his entire fucking village that's powerful and it, although very ugly things happen in this film it, you feel like you're seeing something you need to see the painted bird just feels like a checklist of awful shit it's done it's not aesthetically pleasing it's just bad shit. It's like, it's a little checklist of bad shit. It's like a skate video where it's like, okay, here's Rodney Mullen's part. Here's fucking Steve Barra's part. Except here's the guy getting his eyeballs ripped out. Here's the guy getting eaten by rats. Here's the woman being raped with a uh, glass bottle. This movie, so many horrible things happen in this movie and it's not for a greater point. There's no point. Even when the point is, there is no point. 
There's not even that. It's horrible shit for horrible shit's sake. I can take horrible shit. I like feel bad movies. I love Michael Haneke. I sit there and watch The Seventh Continent and I go, holy shit, I never want to see that again. It's horrific. An, entirely, an entire family commits suicide together. That's fucking horrific. But you know what? It was a real story and he's telling that real story and the senselessness of that. The Painted Bird, it's just how much dumb, bad shit can I throw in? The, it's horrible. The, and it, it, for no greater good. It's not this. He's not making an existential point. He's not making any point. It's just bad shit. All the women are whores. All the men are terrible and pedophiles. You see suicides. You see hangings. You see a horse get murdered. You see. It, fuck it. You you don't need to see that shit. Fucking thirty four years old. I watch the news. I don't need to see that shit. So let's talk about the tone. The tone of both of these movies. Uh, let's start with Come and See. This movie it. It's very effective, and it hammers home the point over and over and over again, especially toward the ending when he's shooting the, the painting of Hitler, and it's intercut with real stuff. Like, you see all these horrible things throughout the movie, and it's like, okay, it's just a movie, it's just a movie. When you see real Hitler and real Jews starving to death, uh, that hammers home that this is real, this shit happened. And more importantly, the Flora character gives it some fucking humanity. He, he feels for these things. He's weeping often at these horrific things. The Painted Bird, I felt like this movie was daring me to stop watching it. Uh, the Painted Bird was not saying anything about World War II. It was uh, kind of World War II adjacent. You, he, you get to the trains and the Jews dying and all that shit, but everybody along the way is despicable. It, everything in the movie is a choice. It's a choice to show 20 horrible things instead of two. It's a choice to it's a choice to make it three hours. It's a choice to be nasty and horrific for no point. There's no point. Again, this movie felt like it was daring me to walk out and I was at home so it would have been weird. But it was daring me to turn it off. So in conclusion, let's conclude on both of these movies. Come and See is a movie where the director has a lot to say, and he's saying it very effectively, and it's um, effective is the word that just keeps coming into my mind. It's a very effectively powerful movie about World War II. He's, he's effective with the composition of the shots. He's effective with the sound design. He's effective with the choice of intercutting actual footage of Hitler at the end. This is an angry film, but the anger is not misplaced. The anger is entirely where it should be. It's at this great evil that is real. And it's a tough watch, but it's worth every second, and it's amazing. The Painted Bird is not saying anything interesting, and nothing interesting happens as it's being not said. Uh, it's a marathon of horrible shit happening. It's like a playlist of horrible shit, and none of it amounts to anything. Uh, a house on fire in black and white looks cool. Like you, I can't, I can't knock him for that. That always is gonna look cool. But other than that, this is a massive dud and a waste of three hours. So that's all I have. This video literally almost killed me. I'm gonna go watch something very uplifting. I might watch Phantom of the Paradise. Uh, yeah, I need something to make me happy because these are draining to watch. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Oscar Deluxe, on Twitter at Oscar Deluxe, and uh, at and on Letterbox at. At, it's at Ween, W-E-E-E-N, but I think if you look up Oxford Deluxe, you find me that way too. Thank you, stay hydrated, and wear a mask. <laughs>